Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Crystal. Last time, we went around the world and checked out some stuff that we could access now that we have gotten rid of the Sudowoodo on Route 36. And this time, I just remembered in between episodes that there is one more thing we can get with Cut that we couldn't get before, over here on Route 32 south of Violet City. If we chop this tree and talk to this guy... ROAR! People run when I roar! But you came looking! That pleases me! Now take this! And we get TMO5. Three guesses as to what's in here. Roar! It's roar! Even Pokemon run from a good roar. Alright, now that we have done that, I will meet you guys back up near Ecruteague City. Or not. Since it is currently Sunday right now, we can actually check out Sunny of Sunday right here on Route 37. Meaning it's Sunday today, I was told to give you this if I saw you. And we get the Magnet, which is a really, really good held item for Elekid. That thing... Um, what was it now? Oh, I remember now. A Pokémon that knows electric moves should hold it. My sis Monica says it powers up electric moves. Very cool, so let's go into our backpack, and I think we want to equip that to Elekid as soon as possible. Meaning right now. There we go. Very good. Now I'll meet you guys over in Ecruteague City. Alrighty, now that we're here in Ecruteague City, there are a few things I would like to go over. Not too terribly many things, but there are some important things to check out. First things first, I'm going to flash up the inventory of the shop in this town. I don't think there's anything new. Well, actually, no, I think revives are new. They're pretty self-explanatory. They restore a fainted Pokemon to one half HP. That item is going to be very, very useful going forward, and I think this is the first time you are actually allowed to buy them. Anyway, there should be a hidden item. Yes, right here, another Hyper Potion. Very, very nice. One other thing I'd really like to show, although we can't do much with it yet, is this building. I always found this building quite iconic. Two towers, two Pokemon, but when one burned down, both Pokemon flew away never to return. The Tin Tower ahead is a nine-tier tower of divine beauty. It soothes the soul of all who see it. Tin Tower is off-limits to anyone without Ecruteague Jim's badge. Sorry, but you'll have to leave. Interesting stuff, and he'll always stand in our way, which I find to be really quite amusing. As you can probably imagine, Ecruteague City is probably one of the most lore-heavy areas in the entire game, and I think it's really cool how this town has just this huge story behind it. Ecruteague City, a historical city where the past meets the present. Now, I'm not going to be going into full detail about this city because a lot of what makes it so cool to me isn't going to be made clear until later, but just know that I really like this place. Anyway, right here we have this kid. Ah, you're on an adventure with your Pokémon. Well, what's an adventure without treasure hunting? Am I right or am I right? You are right, good sir. Good, you understand the true spirit of adventure. I like that. Take this with you. And we get an item finder, which is a key item that allows us to find hidden items. I'm probably not going to be making use of this in the Let's Play, because as you all might imagine, I have my own personal list that I've been keeping track of, so I'm going to make sure I don't miss anything. There are many items lying about that aren't obvious. Use Item Finder to check if there's an item on the ground near you. It doesn't show the exact spot, so you'll have to look yourself. Oh yeah, I heard there are items in Ecruteague's Burned Tower. Interesting stuff. What does this have to say? History of Ecruteague. Yeah, let's read it. In Ecruteague, there were two towers. Each tower was the roost of powerful flying Pokémon, but one of the towers burned to the ground. The two Pokémon haven't been seen since. Ecruteague was also home to three Pokémon that raced around the town. They were said to have been born of water, lightning, and fire. But they could not contain their excessive power. So they say the three ran like the wind off into the grassland. Interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. Anyway, right over here we actually have the Ecruteague City Pokémon Gym, Leader Morty the Mystic Seer of the Future. Unfortunately, if we head on inside... Morty, the gym leader, is absent. Sorry, but you'll have to leave. Ho 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 ho. 
yep, unfortunately, the gym leader is not here and we cannot challenge the gym without the guy being present. So I think instead we are going to go over, where was it? This way to, is it this building? Yeah, the Ecruteek Dance Theater. Let's head on inside here. And we've got some interesting music playing. Not only are the Kimono Girls great dancers, they're also skilled at Pokemon. I always challenge them, but I've never even left a scratch. Lad, if you can defeat all the Kimono Girls, I'll give you a gift. Very interesting. Right here, we have a Rhydon. And right here, we have a fancy panel that's decorated with flowers. Very cool, but the main attraction is obviously these five women up here. These are the Kimono Girls, and yes indeed, we do have to fight them in order to get a very important item that that old man has for us. You have lovely Pokémon. May I see them in battle? Alrighty. Now, I personally don't really consider these boss fights, so I'm not going to be giving detailed team information for these battles. But right here we have Kimono Girl Naoko, and she has a Flareon. A pattern regarding these trainers is probably going to become apparent pretty quickly. But indeed, each one of them only has one Pokémon, so you probably don't have too terribly much to worry about. And you are 100% allowed to run back to the Pokémon Center and heal if you happen to get in a bad way during these fights, so... There's really not much risk to you in these fights, so should be already all, uh, all right for you. Anyway, I'm really disappointed that Thunder Punch didn't knock out Flareon, considering the first one did slightly more than half. But I guess that's just my luck in these kinds of things. Anyway, these guys give a lot of experience points, and wow, that was close. Darn it. Oh, you are very strong. Indeed, I am. Right here we have the second Kimono Girl. I always dance with my Pokémon. Of course, I also train them. Alright, Kimono Girl number two is... Sayo. Now... This one has an Espeon, so yes, each one is going to have a different evolution of Eevee, which I think is a really neat little detail to showcase that there are a couple more evolutions in this game. Anyway, I'm going to switch over to Croconaw right here, and I think we are going to bite this one because, you, because as you might imagine from its moveset, it is a Psychic type. So, I think Bite is definitely a good thing to do. Now, fun fact about these Kimono Girls is, like, the Pokemon Company can never freaking decide what their names are, because they have names in Japanese, and then they have different but still Japanese-sounding names in the English version, and even still, I'm pretty sure their names in the anime are different from that. I'm really not sure what the motivation was behind making these changes. I was so close, I almost had you. As you can see, these Kimono Girls also pay very well, so fighting them has its benefits. Isn't my barrette pretty? Oh, a Pokémon battle? Alright, let's get right on to this. But yeah, these battles are- I don't want to say they're tedious, because they're really not terrible. This is Kimono Girl Zuki. But it's just, we're only fighting five Pokémon, but for each one we have to go through the whole song and dance of starting the battle, going through the battle, ending the battle, walking over to the next Kimono Girl. It gets a little bit uh, tedious at times, so hopefully it doesn't bother any of you too much. It's a required part of the game, though. though. Man, I cannot speak today. Anyway, I'm going to switch over to Heracross, and I should point out... Oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh wow, it actually didn't take me out. Pursuit is a special move. If you try and switch out on the turn the opponent is using Pursuit, it will do a lot more damage. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Man, I can't even remember what I was saying. <laughs> I guess uh, Pursuit really threw me for a loop right there. Oh well, I guess it'll come back to me in time. Anyway, we're gonna just keep on plowing through this Umbreon here using all of our attacks, and we should be good. Man, I'm trying to remember what I was saying. I feel like it was important. Maybe I'm just crazy. Aye. Anyway, down goes Umbreon. 
And there we go, Kimono Girl Zuki was defeated. I don't have any Pokemon left. Ah well, sucks to be you. Oh, you're a cute trainer. Would you like to battle? Alright, let's do this. Oh yeah, I know what I was going to say. Uh, in the remake, if you're playing the remake, you do not actually fight the Kimono Girls right here. Right here we have Kimono Girl Kuni with a Vaporeon, which I don't believe we've seen yet. In the remake, you actually fight a Team Rocket Grunt here, and you do not fight the Kimono Girls until later. I'm not going to go into detail about that because it's actually a pretty major plot point spoiler for the remake. Also, it's going to take me out, isn't it? Oh wow, it's not. Wow, we got lucky there. But yeah, if you're playing Gold and Silver, however, these battles are pretty much exactly the same as you see here. So definitely good to keep that in mind. And Elika gets to level 20. Growing really quickly here, I really like that. You're stronger than you look. I mean, how strong do I look? Oh well. Do you like my dancing? I'm good at Pokemon too. Alright, this is the last Kimono Girl, and it's going to be really nice to bring them all down without having to run back and heal. Feels more authentic that way. Anyway, this is Kimono Girl Miki, and there is only one Eevee evolution left. Jolteon. As you might imagine, it's an electric type. I mean, just look at it. It's definitely pumping some volts over there. Anyway, we're going to go over to Cubone, because Cubone is pretty much our only really good counter to electric types, and I have a feeling this thing probably only has probably quick attack and then an electric type move, so we should be okay. Oh, it's got tackle, which I'd argue is even worse than quick attack, so it looks like we're in a good position. Alright, half damage, and one more bone club should hopefully do it. Although, I've been unluckier in the past. Nope, that actually did it. Very cool, and Cubone should get a level off of that. Yes, Cubone gets level 17. Very nice, and it's trying to learn Leer, which is... Alright, I guess, but I'm gonna skip out on it. Yeah. And we have defeated all five Kimono Girls. Oh, you're good at Pokemon, too. You bet I am. Alright. Anyway, gonna head right on over here and speak to this guy. Not only are the Kimono Girls great dancers, they're also skilled at Pokemon. I always challenge them, but I've never even left a scratch. The way you battled, it was like watching a dance. It was a rare treat to see. I want you two to have this. Don't worry, take this. Why did, why did I say you two? I don't even know why I said that. Anyway, we have HM03, which is a really, really good move. That's Surf. It's a move that lets Pokemon swim across water, and believe it or not, Rhydon is actually capable of learning this move. I really don't know why. Anyway, this is the move I was referring to in previous episodes that I would like to replace Water Gun with on Croconaw, because Surf, unlike most HMs, is actually a very solid move. It's like 90 power water type move. It's crazy. It's actually really good, so we're going to have this on the main team. So yeah, we're going to get rid of Water Gun, finally. I bet it physically hurts some people to see me continue to use that even now in the Let's Play. So yeah, it is gone, and we have replaced it with Surf. Unfortunately, we cannot actually use Surf until we obtain the Gym Badge, which I think is something we should get working on as soon as possible. Alright, now that that's all out of the way, I feel like we should head over this way to see if we can track down the gym leader, because as we discovered earlier in the video, he is not around. Burned tower. It was destroyed by a mysterious fire. Please stay away, as it is unsafe. Okay, we will 100% stay away from this building as it is unsafe. Yep, that's how you do it in these RPGs. My name's Yuzine. I'm on the trail of a Pokemon named Suicune. And you are? David, glad to meet you. I heard rumors that Suicune is in this burned tower, so I came to take a look. But where exactly could it be? Very interesting. First things first, before we do anything else, I want to cast up a Repel right here. And believe it or not, I had to go all the way freaking back to Goldenrod City to buy these in between jump cuts in this video. I don't know what it is, but like half the shops in this game carry Repels and half of them don't. Ecruteek's gym leader has to study what are said to be the legendary Pokemon. 
Suicune, Entei, and Raiko. Yuzin is here, so I've decided to investigate the tower with him. This is the gym leader, Morty. Be good to keep in mind that he is here, because it looks like we've got a task to fulfill here. We don't know what it is, but he will not return to the gym before we complete it. Anyway, right here, we have an HP up, which is definitely something you want to grab. Very, very, very good stuff. Anyway, I think there's another hidden item around here somewhere. Am I correct about this? Aha, there it is, geez. The list I have is very, very coy about where this is, so it's a good thing we were able to track it down. All right. Now, worth noting, in all Generation 2 games and the remake except for Crystal, there are trainers in this area. However, in this game, there are no trainers, so keep that in mind. Well, that's not entirely true. There is one trainer here that is not here... Well, that's not entirely true. There's one trainer here who is in all the games, including this one, and that is, of course, the rival right here. Oh, it's you. I came looking for some legendary Pokemon that they say roosts here. But there's nothing here. Nothing after all the trouble of coming to this dump? No way. It's all your fault. Really not sure how this could possibly be my fault, but yes, we are in battle with Silver again right here. He is going to open up with a level 20 Haunter with the moves Lick, Spite, Mean Look, and Curse. I believe Curse is the only new move in his moveset, and it's a bit of a scary one. Because, whenever a Pokémon that is Ghost-type uses Curse, it has a different effect from how it works on any other Pokémon, as we'll see right here. It is going to slash its HP in half and place a Curse on Croconaw, which is basically a really devastating type of poison, except it doesn't do damage outside of battle because it wears off whenever you switch. It's going to do, I want to say, right around a quarter of our health every turn, which is really scary, although I think since we scored a knockout on this turn, I'm not sure if it's going to do anything. No, it's not, which is really, really lucky. So we have the chance to switch out right here to Cubone, because he is going to send out next a level 18 Magnemite with the moves Tackle, Thundershock, Supersonic, and Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom can be a pretty scary move in the early game because it will always do precisely 20 points of damage. And I don't think anything changes that except I'm pretty sure ghost types are immune to it because it's a normal type move. So yeah, it can bring down most of your team in two or three hits at this point in the game, so be wary of it. Anyway, up next is Bayleaf, which is an interesting one. I think I'm going to switch over to... Heracross for this one. This is a level 22 Bayleaf with the moves Razorleaf, Growl, Poison Powder, and Reflect. Reflect is basically a physical version of Light Screen that will cause physical damage done to the user of Reflect and basically their entire team to be lowered during the uh, time that it's in effect. Anyway, if you instead chose Cyndaquil as your starter, there would instead be a level 22 Croconaw here with the moves Water Gun, Leer, Bite, and Rage. And if you chose Chikorita, you would be seeing a level 22 Quilava with the moves Ember, Leer, Quick Attack, and Smoke Screen. Since I picked Totodile, I get Bayleaf. Which honestly is probably the easiest one to take out, although I don't have a counter specifically geared for this thing quite yet, which is unfortunate. When Zubat learns a Flying-type move, we'll definitely have a counter for this thing. And maybe once it learns some more powerful Poison attacks, but for right now, we don't have much to go on. And you'll probably notice I do not have Zubat with me. That is because I had to bring in an HM Slave to use Rock Smash in this area. Because as I've already demonstrated, there's some stuff in this area you can only get if you bring in a Pokémon with Rock Smash, and I wanted to show that. And, I mean, Zubat's level 18, so... When it comes right down to it, Heracross and Cubone could probably use the experience a little bit more. So that was my logic behind that. And also, this is going to be closer than I expected it to be. But we did indeed win, even though he had a 6 level advantage on us. 
Yeah, a little scary. Anyway, Heracross gets level 17. And the last Pokemon up is his own Zubat, which is level 20, and it knows the moves Leech Life, Supersonic, Bite, and Confuse Ray. Alright. So, this one probably isn't going to be that big of a deal for us to take out. We have an Elekid with Thunder Punch and a Magnet equipped. Yeah, didn't think so, buddy. And down it goes, and we get 231 experience. And Silver was defeated, very nice. Huh. <laughs> this is why I hate battling wimps. There's no challenge in it. See, I don't get this dialogue. We beat you, buddy. Hey. Oh, whatever. You would never be able to catch a legendary Pokemon anyway. Huh. What are you doing falling into a hole? Some genius you are. Serves you right. And you actually see him turn to the left, like, immediately before the screen fades white, which is really interesting. Anyway, we seems to be in the basement for now. Eerie stuff. Very, very eerie stuff. Anyway, is there anything around here? I'm not sure if there actually is anything around here on this floor, at least not for the moment. I dug a hole here too. I was shocked. Suicune raced by like a blur right in front of my eyes. For ten years I chased Suicune, and I finally got to see it. I'm all choked up. David, I owe this all to you. Thank you. I heard that the legendary Pokemon of Ecruteek test chosen humans by allowing them to get close. I'm going to track Suicune. David, let's meet again. Farewell. Yes indeed, it would seem we have encountered the three legendary Pokemon that were mentioned to us upstairs. Anyway, right here we have this right here. A Pokemon may be able to move this. Unfortunately, we do not have the ability to get that moved quite yet. Now, I should mention, there are two Pokémon that you can encounter in this area. By the way, this is where that comes out. There are two Pokémon that you can encounter in this area. They are Coughing and its evolved form, Wheezing. Very, very interesting stuff. Anyway, Repel's effect wears off because, of course, it does. Alright, there we go. And right here, if we come back to where we fought Silver, there is an Ether hidden right here. Not sure why they put it there, of all things, because you actually have to backtrack in order to get it. But whatever. Anyway, let's head out of this uh, tower right here. Alright, and here we are outside, and I believe this is the guy who was in the gym earlier. In the distant past, this tower burned in a fire. Three nameless Pokémon perished in it. A rainbow-colored Pokémon descended from the sky and resurrected them. It's a legend that has been passed down by Ecruteek gym leaders. Me? I was a trainer way back when. Ho ho ho. Man, this guy is old. Now, fun fact, those Pokemon that died in that fire, they're mentioned constantly, but their identity is never exactly clarified. And for the longest time, the going theory was that they were a Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon, considering the typings of the Pokemon that they were resurrected as. I personally did like this theory, but it was actually disproven last year in late 2016 when the Pokemon Generations anime short about Ecruteek City was released, because in that short, the Pokemon that perished are actually, believe it or not, depicted perishing, and they bear no resemblance to the evolutions of Eevee, so I'm personally going to say that that theory is probably not entirely correct. Now, I am going to also point out, technically, this is the earliest point you can possibly obtain the legendary Pokemon Raikou and Entei through a mechanic known as Roaming Pokemon. I am not going to be going into this in detail right- oh my god, are you serious? Let's just ignore him. I'm not going to be going into detail about this mechanic right now just because it is incredibly difficult 
to get a hold of these Pokémon with our current skill set, but I figured if you are crazy enough to try and get a hold of them, you can look up this mechanic online and figure out how to manipulate it to make your life a little bit easier to get a hold of these Pokémon, but I really would not recommend doing it at this stage of the game. Anyway, I think with that we are going to end things off here. So, this past episode of Pokémon Crystal, the main thing is we checked out the Burnt Tower, and we saw the three legendary Pokémon that have been mentioned in Ecruteek's Legends right before our eyes. We also battled the Kimono Girls, and we also got the Ecruteek Gym Leader to return to his post. And next time on Pokémon Crystal, I think we're going to head over to that gym, and we are going to claim our fourth gym badge. So without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.